long time ago, there was a family who had a farm at the boundary between the land of men and the land of spirits. They, one day they walked past seven forests and crossed seven rivers to work long hours planting their yams before gathering their pins to hurry away before darkness descended and the spirits would come out to tend their own yam fields. They went on their way home. They passed seven forests and crossed seven rivers and finally got back to their home. It was only then that the youngest son discovered that he had forgotten his flute on the farm. Now his flute was the only thing that he could truly call his own. You see, he had made it himself from a bamboo shoot. He rose up with great sadness and said he was going back to the farm to get his flute. His mother begged him in tears not to go back and promised to buy him a new flute at the next market day. But the boy did not want a gift flute in place of the one he had made with his own hands. His father pleaded with him at first gently and then in anger for his stubbornness. But when father and mother saw that he would not be moved, they let him go. So the boy crossed the seven rivers and through the seven forests and at last got back to the farm. And surely the spirits were there working to plant their own ghost yams. At the boy's approach, they all straightened up and regarded him with anger in their eyes. Fear froze the boy where he stood and everywhere was then the leader of the spirits spoke. His voice was like the dry bark of thunder through a throat of iron. Ah, human boy, who sent you here? What are you looking for, foolish fly? Did nobody tell you that we are abroad at this time? Answer me at once. I have only one flute in this world, and I, I forgot it under that dead tree over there. I, I don't mean to offend you. I only want my flute back. Flute, hmm? Tell me, will you recognize this flute of yours if you see it, human boy? Yes, yes, yes. Then the spirit reached down into his goatskin bag and brought out a flute shining like gold. Is this it? No. Now what about this one? that shines like the kernel of the water of heaven. No! Finally, the chief of the spirits brought out a miserable-looking bamboo flute, but before he could even ask, the boy jumped up and down with joy and said, That's my flute! All right, take it and play for us. And so he did. The spirits were delighted by the boys playing, and they laughed. <laughs> We like your playing, but tell me something, little boy. Did your mother not promise to buy you a new flute from the market? She did. But I don't want to be given things. I like to make things myself, and I made this flute. You should not have disobeyed your mother and father. But we forgive you because we like your spirit. And because we like you, we will make you a present for your parents. The spirit leader made a sign with his left hand, and two younger spirits brought forward two cups, one large, one small, both firmly sealed. Take one of these. And the boy took the smallest pot. The spirits nodded at one another in satisfaction. Go well. When you reach home, call your mother and father and break the pot before them. The boy thanked them and set up for home. But wait, if you hear doom doom on your way, run into the bush and hide. But if you hear jam jam, then come back onto the road. On the way, the boy heard doom doom, and he hid in the bush. Then he heard jam jam, and he came out again to continue his journey. He passed the seven rivers and the seven forests and reached his father's compound. He called his parents together as the spirit had told him 
and he broke the pot in front of them. Immediately the compound was filled with every good thing. Gold, silver, bronze, cloth, velvet, foods of all kinds, sheep, goats, cows, and everything else of value. The boy's mother decided that she would offer part of these gifts to every member of the family. But one family member was so jealous of their riches that she rejected the gift and took her own son to the farm the very next morning. They waited all day, even though there was no more work to do. And when they left at sunset, she made her son drop his flute and pretend to forget and leave it behind. Well, as soon as they got home, she sent him right back to the field with the instructions not to come home without his flute and a pot full of presents. Well, the spirits asked the same questions as the day before, but this boy took the gold flute as his own. Then he played an ugly song that the spirits did not like, but the leader anyway ordered two pots brought forward, and the boy grabbed the bigger one without even waiting to hear anything about them. The spirit told him to break the pot before his father and mother, and also told the boy what to do when he heard doom doom and jim jim. But the boy did not obey. He stayed on the path when he heard doom doom and hid in the bush when he heard jim jim. Eventually, he crossed all seven rivers and passed all seven forests and reached home. His mother immediately took him into their hut and shut the doors so no one would see all of their rewards. But when she broke the pot, evil and disease filled the hut and punished the greedy family members. Oh my goodness, that was a really scary folk tale, right? Yeah. Aren't you glad we warned you? <laughs> so what do you think the moral of this story is? What do you think this story is trying to teach us? What do you think? Bill. What? Bill. To build? To make things. Anyone have any, yeah, like making your own flute? What do you think the moral is? Yeah, great, great. I think this story teaches us a lot of things. That it's not good to be greedy, that we should be truthful, that we should listen to our mom and dad, right? We are going to play a piece for you by a composer from Nigeria, just like this folk tale. His name was Akin Yuba, and it's called Study in Polyrhythm Number 3. In this piece, you're gonna hear how happy the honest boy and his family are. And I want you to pretend that you are at a party celebrating their good fortune, okay? So you can dance along with this happy music. 